Yeah, uh, and, you yeah know. but so, it's so embarrassing and weird that we can't just have a normal primary. Uh, it, I, I love South Carolina. I would, I'm glad that South Carolina is going first. But there's something wrong in a party where you have this much discontent with the candidate and nobody can figure out a way to vote or do anything that counts or send a signal or send up a smoke signal, get a carrier pigeon, do well, something well, and listen to the fact that people in this party are very worried that Biden's not the right person. And so, and, 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 and by the way, uh, he can't give a speech now because these kids are so upset. In 1968, there was an unpopular war with very scary images and it mobilized a generation and it hurt Democrats in 68. Well that, that was happen. Happen. well, that was the example that Dean Phillips chose to... Exactly. I mean, he thought he could be Eugene McCarthy. In that, yeah. Yeah, yeah I mean, there, there was an opportunity for a candidate other than Joe Biden to make moves here and for voters in New Hampshire to say, we want to see somebody different than Joe Biden. And Joe and Biden won in a write-in three but, by three but, to but one. But, but, so, you, but do you feel good about it? Like, hold on, do you, but do you feel good about the fact that uh, these people who did go for Dean, their stuff doesn't count anyway? There's no way for anybody in this party to register an effective, even protest vote because the DNC ziplocked this thing before anybody but had you a don't, chance. You don't think if there had been an unexpected level of support for Dean Phillips in this process sure. today that there would have been more of a reckoning? There was absolutely the opportunity for people to make their voice heard, but people did want to see Joe Biden be the nominee. Joe Biden clear, beat Donald man. Trump uh, what are you in 2020. In terms and, of people not make, like, what part of it makes you feel what, they were cut off from the process? Well, the fact that, um, first of all, I, I think Dean Phillips begged everybody to run, begged Gavin to run, Gretchen to run. The people who were basically man managing themselves for 2028 didn't want to run, so he had to kind of kamikaze himself. But the, the way that the DNC is operating is sending the signal that this is, for, this, this is Joe Biden's party, perfectly fine. And that no dissent is welcome, and that's the, the message well, that's being received. The, I, I think here's what, here, here's, here's what I think. He's also the president, though. I mean, he he is the head of the party. It is Joe Biden's party. Right. I mean, he's the head of the party. Well, now, uh, tell you, may the see, you may not want to see him be hey, the nominee, hey, tell, but tell, tell, tell a lot of Democrats do. Tell that to all these young voters. A lot of Democrats I mean, Here's do. the reality. Here's the reality. A lot of people have, uh, have have expressed concerns. I've expressed my own concerns, but I think that there's such a focus. Uh, there is affection for Joe Biden in the Democratic Party. Always, always. But, uh, but there's also a great fear of Donald Trump. And I think that there are a lot of people who, say, who thought about running, who quietly thought about running, and thought, I don't want to do something. He's, he's going to be the nominee of the Democratic Party, and I don't want to damage him <laughs> in that cause. And uh, so that, that, is, that is the reality of what happened. As long as Joe Biden wanted to run... Uh, he was going to be the nominee of the party. And, and but look, I do... There's always... Can I just say really quickly? I mean, look, there's always... Historically, there's hand-wringing, right? There's always hand-wringing around the re-election. There's always concern. I think, Axe, you could speak to concerns in 2012 about Obama's candidacy. Of course, when you're looking at a president who has had four years in office and, uh, you know, people have zeroed in on their lines of attack and, you know, it, it, this is not a, an unprecedented uh, political moment. It does not mean that Joe Biden is in some way uh, historically vulnerable. I don't think that's true. I, I don't do. Think that's true. Well, but I do think that... He is historically vulnerable. I don't think that's true. He is historically vulnerable. Well, then, look, then look, why did Democrats you, overperform in 2022? Why did they course, overperform in 2023? We're talking about 2024, and you and I read the same polls. You know he is historically vulnerable. That doesn't make Donald Trump a world beater, but he ain't getting any younger, and these numbers haven't been getting any better, and you're not, you can't fix it. And you might be able to fix some of it with Trump, and that's why you want Trump so bad. You say he's, he's a threat to democracy, but you've been begging to put him on the ballot, which I still don't understand. But he is historically vulnerable for exactly the reasons Van just pointed out. You've got tons of constituencies who are mad about what's been done for them or not done for them, and you've got a bunch of people who don't think he's got the mental capacity to hold the office. It is historic vulnerability well, in this incumbent. It is also historic that he's the oldest presidential candidate in history. And yes, Donald Trump is old as well, but the reality is the two largest voting blocs going into 2024 are Gen Z and millennials. Uh, two generations that are going to feel completely disenfranchised by two octogenarians running against each other. Unfortunately for Democrats, those voting blocs tend to trend to Democrats, and they are not energized um, under Joe Biden. I do think that you're running into a number of different constituencies that are core to the Democrats to get by, and they're just not hey, lining up behind Biden. It's, it's also, I mean, yes, it is true that there was some, you know, Bernie Sanders and others raised some issues in 2011. There were concerns about uh, Obama, but he was 30 years younger, 
and he was stronger in polls. And so the, the, the concerns are legit. I think it's water under the bridge now because Joe Biden is running. He's going to be the nominee of the party. And I think the party is going to try and unify behind him.